Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is module 10, lesson five, using the distributive property. After this lesson, you need to be able to factor polynomials by using the distributive property and factor polynomials by grouping. Let's learn factoring by using the distributive property. In lesson two, we learned about using the distributive property to multiply a polynomial by a monomial. As we can see here, we had three y times this quantity. We just multiplied that three y by everything, and we end up with our final polynomial. We can also use the fact that the distributive property multiplies it out to factor. And here we're just going to be undoing our multiplication. So factoring is your process of expressing a polynomial as the product of a monomial and polynomials. And in the next lesson, we're going to use it more to factor into two binomials. So here, if we're given with what we ended with, so 6y squared plus 15, we can think about what is something that we could have multiplied both of those things by before if we were using the distributive property. So one of those things could have been 3y. I can multiply both of these things by 3y. And then to factor it, I would undo that. So if I multiplied by 3y, then what did I have to multiply the first thing by? It must have been by 2y. If I multiplied by 3y, what was multiplied must have been 5. So undoing that distributive property, factoring, I would pull out 3y, and I'd be left with 2y plus 5. So it's not quite division. It's more undoing the multiplication. And when we're doing this, we're going to find the greatest common factor, so the largest factor of our numbers and our variables that we can remove from each term. Example one, use the distributive property. Use the distributive property to factor each polynomial. We have 12a squared plus 16a. Here, they're breaking it down into four steps. First, they're finding the factors of each term. So 12a squared is really two times two times three. That's your prime factorization. And there are two a's, so a times a. 16a, two times two times two times two, and then times a. Then once we figure out the prime factorization and break down our variables for each, we're gonna underline anything that's in common. So here we have a two and a two, a two and a two. Here's a three, but there's no threes. These have twos, but there's no twos. So we can't underline any more numbers. Then to the variables, we had an A here and an A down here. We still have an A up here, which is fine, but there's no A to underline it paired with, so we're done. Now to find the GCF, we're gonna put all that back together. So we have two times two times A, that's what we could find in both. Multiplying that back out to simplify, we would just have four A. Now we're gonna write our final factored form as the product of the GCF and the remaining factors. So if we were to divide out a 4a from both, as we can see here, if I took out 4a, well, what's left? When we write it out, it's the ones that are not underlined. So that would be left with 3a. And for the 16a, we're left with a two and a two, so times four. Then to simplify it even more, we're going to put these two remaining parts together inside the parentheses, showing that I could factor out a 4a and I'd be left with 3a in the first and four in the second. In step one, another way you could do this is by listing out all the factors of each number, and then the variable part would be the same as we showed here. But we could do like one and 12, two and six, three and four, using kind of like, there's a little rainbow method that a lot of elementary school teachers will use. We could do that. And then the same for 16, we have one with 16, two with eight, and then four would be by itself. What is the largest that we can see in both? Four, so that's where that four comes from. And then the same with the A's, we had A and A, and then just a, so what's the most we can take out? Just one, there's our second part, 4a. So this way is good to figure out the GCF quickly. However, the downside to doing that, it doesn't give us the leftover parts as if we use the prime factorization, but either way works. In B, we can follow the same process. Our numbers are just a little larger. So we're gonna find the prime factorization of each of our numbers. This time, notice, because we had a subtraction sign, we're also going to use negative one as one of our values in our prime factorization. So when we multiply everything out, we're looking for things that are in common to all three this time. It has to be common in everything. So I see a five here, a five here, and a five here. There's no twos in the others. There's no threes in the top or the bottom. So five just must be it. Then for my variables, I have an X and another X and another X. And then again, I have an X and an X and an X. I have a Y and a Y in the top two, but not the bottom one. So there's nothing else I can take out. So five X and X would be my GCF, which is 5x to the second power. Then to write my factored form, I'm going to pull out that greatest common factor from each term. So if I were to divide each of these by 5x squared, what am I going to be left with? In the first one, 20 divided by 5 is 4. x squared and x squared would eliminate each other. They would cancel to 0. So I'd be left with 4y squared. In the second one, I have negative 45 divided by 5, which is negative 9. Again, the x squareds would cancel out. I'd be left with negative 9y. And in the last one, negative 35 divided by 5 is negative 7, and the x squareds once again cancel each other out. So I'd be left with just negative 7. 
For my final form, I'm going to put all those remaining factors together. So 4y squared minus 9y minus 7 with our GCF of 5x squared out front. Check your understanding. Factor each polynomial. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answers. For the first one, it has a greatest common factor of 11n squared. And when you divide that out, you're left with 3n minus 11. For the second one, it has a greatest common factor of 2ac. And when you take that out, we're left with 7ab squared minus 3c plus 5. Let's learn. Factoring by grouping. When a polynomial has four or more terms, you can sometimes use a method called grouping to factor. So similar terms are grouped together, then the distributive property is applied to binomials that have things in common. So our key concept here, factoring by grouping, we can factor by grouping only if all of the following conditions exist. There has to be four or more terms. They have to have common factors that can be grouped. And there has to be at least two common factors that are identical or additive inverses. And we're going to see what that looks like in a second. Example three, factor by grouping. So factor 2uv plus 6u plus 5v plus 15. So if we want to factor this by grouping, it doesn't really look like there's a lot in common here or anything that we could take out of each part. So we're going to attempt to use grouping. What this does, we're going to group things that have common factors together. So in this first two, 2 and 6 both have a common factor, and they both have a u. So there's at least something in common. And these third and fourth terms also have something in common. I can see 5 and 15 are both divisible by 3. Even if they don't have a variable in common, at least it's something. So in the first one, 2 and 6, I can pull out that common factor of 2, and I can also pull out a u. So I can take 2u out. If I do that, I'd be left with v and 3, so v plus 3. In the second two, I could divide both by 5, so pull out that greatest common factor, and notice I'm left with the exact same thing, v plus 3. This is a key feature of grouping. If you are able to do grouping and it's done correctly, you should end up with a common factor that is left over. So v plus 3 was my remainder for both the first part and the second part. So because that's the part that's in common, that's actually the greatest common factor. I could have taken that out of both, I just didn't realize it. So I'm going to bring that out front, and then what's left would be the 2u plus 5. Check your understanding. Factor tw plus 10t minus 2w minus 20. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have got t minus 2 and w plus 10. Let's look how to get that. In the first one, I can see that I could pull a t out of both. That's the only thing they have in common. So t and then I'd be left with w plus 10. In the second two, I see I could take out a negative 2 from both. That first one being negative and that one also being negative. I just want to get rid of that negative. I'd be left with w. And then if I divided by negative 2, I would also have positive 10. So again, my GCF is what was in common. w plus 10 right there. And what was I left with combined together is t minus 2. Example 4. Factor by grouping with additive inverses. It's helpful to recognize when binomials are additive inverses of each other. For example, 5 minus x is equal to negative 1 times x minus 5. You're not usually going to see the negative 1 in the problem, so what you're going to look for for additive inverses are your numbers just switched around with the subtraction in the middle. So let's look at this with grouping and then how our additive inverse comes into play. So we want to factor 21m minus 3mp plus 4p minus 28. I'm going to group together things that have common factors. So this has an m and an m. These are both divided by 4. So in the first group, I can pull out a 3 and an m and I'd be left with 7 minus p. In the second group, I can divide both by 4, and I'd be left with p minus 7. So here is where we can recognize I have my additive inverses of each other, 7 minus p, p minus 7. So what I can do is factor out a negative 1, and it switches the order of their numbers. So now instead of 7 minus p, it's p minus 7. This is important because now we have the same thing both times, which is what we need for grouping. So combining these two together, I'd have negative 3m, and then finally, for my distributive property, actually pulling the GCF out front, we'd have p minus 7, and then what was left was negative 3m plus 4. For this problem, let's go through an alternate method just to show that we don't necessarily have to group always the things that are next to each other. So in this one, let's rearrange. So we have the 4p out front, and I'm going to end up grouping these two together. So the ones that are here in the middle to begin with. And then I'm going to bring the 21m to group it with the negative 28. So I noticed that these had a p in common, so I'm allowed to group them together. These both can be divided by 7. I'm allowed to group them together. So if we do that, then in this first set, we can factor out a p. And then in the second, we can factor out a 7. This time, when I'm doing it, I end up with, again, additive inverses of each other. Next, just for the sake of this, they're going to rearrange this problem, switching these two. So it's negative 3m plus 4. That way, the variable comes before our constant number in standard form. Now, we're going to factor out a negative 1. So we can switch our signs to its additive inverse which is what we got right here. Now we have the same thing both times. 
So if I do that, P is still factored out front. So P minus seven. So grouping the remainders together along with our GCF. And then here they just switched it around. So our GCF comes first, ending up with a final answer of negative three M plus four times P minus seven. Check your understanding. Factor this polynomial. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have got negative X plus 11. That's your GCF and three X squared minus four. So if we're doing this, I'm going to group these first together. I see that x squared and there's an x3. So I know I can at least take out an x from both. And then these I can see right away, they're both dividing by four. So in this first one, I can see that I'm definitely going to take out an x2 and they're both divisible by three. And I'd be left with negative with an x and plus 11. And then for the second part, if I take a four out, I end up with x minus 11. To get my additive inverse then of the second one, I'm going to multiply that by a negative. So I'd end up with negative x plus 11. Now I have the same thing both times. So just regroup. I have three X squared minus four. And then what was my GCF was negative X plus 11. So that would be my final answer.